Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I will discuss apnea of prematurity. Now apnea is defined as the cessation of pulmonary airflow for a specific time interval usually longer than 10 to 20 seconds and bradycardia often accompanies prolonged apnea. Now apnea can be caused by immaturity of the brain and weakness of the muscles that keep the airway open. At times, additional stresses in a premature baby including infection, heart or lung problems, low blood count, low oxygen levels, temperature problems, feeding problems and overstimulation may worsen the apnea. Now typically apnea is associated with immaturity of the respiratory control system but it may also be the presenting sign of other diseases or pathophysiological states that can affect the preterm infants. So a thorough consideration of the possible causes is always warranted, especially when the onset or unexpected increase in the frequency of episodes of apnea or bradycardia occurs. Now there are different types of apnea of prematurity, one is central apnea. It refers to a complete cessation of airflow and the respiratory effort with no chest wall movement. Next is obstructive apnea. It refers to the absence of noticeable airflow but with the continuation of the chest wall movements. Now third type is mixed apnea. It is a combination of central and obstructive apnea. It may begin as a brief episode of obstruction which is followed by central apnea. Alternatively, central apnea may produce upper airway closure, which is passive pharyngeal hypotonia, and this results in mixed apnea. Now, a careful evaluation to determine the cause of apnea should be performed immediately in any infant with apnea. The incidence of apnea increases as the gestational age decreases. Now, idiopathic apnea is a disease of premature infants. It appears in the absence of any other identifiable disease states during the first week of life. It usually resolves by 36 to 40 weeks of post-conceptional age. This is gestational age at birth plus the postnatal age. Now the premature infant's process of regulating the respiration is especially vulnerable to apnea. Now mature infants normally increase respiration as a response to hypoxia that is decrease oxygen level while preterm infant respond paradoxically to hypoxia by developing apnea rather than by increasing the respirations. Now poor tone of the laryngeal muscle also may lead to collapse of the upper airway which can cause obstruction. In addition, isolated obstructive apnea may also occur as a result of flexion or extreme lateral positioning of the premature infant's head because this can obstruct the soft trachea. Now the treatment of apnea of prematurity. This includes administration of oxygen to the hypoxic infant, transfusion of the anemic infants, and physical cutaneous stimulation for infants with mild apnea. Methylxanthine including caffeine or theophylline are the mainstay of the pharmacological treatment of apnea. Now this xanthine therapy increases minute ventilation, improves the carbon dioxide sensitivity, decreases hypoxic depressing of the breathing, enhances diaphragmatic activity, and decreases the periodic breathing. Now usually treatment is initiated with a loading dose of methylxanthine which is followed by maintenance therapy. Now high flow nasal cannula therapy and nasal continuous positive airway pressure of 4 to 6 cm of water is also effective. These are relatively safe method of treating the obstructive or mixed apnea. This method work by stimulating the infant and splinting the upper airway. Continuous positive airway pressure also probably increases the functional residual capacity and thus improve oxygenation. Ok friends, thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more informative health videos.